أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق ونور عرش أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا وسيدنا وسندنا وشفيعنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المأثمين المظلومين I begin in Allah's name, the beneficent, the merciful, in Allah, in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Nisa, says, أَمْ يَحْسُدُونَ النَّاسِ عَلَى مَا أَتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلُ فَقَدْ آتَيْنَا آلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ مُلْكًا عَظِيمًا صدق الله العلي العظيم صلى الله عليه محمد وعلى محمد Our condolences on the commemoration of Our Lady Fatima, as you know, we are commemorating her Shahada. As we know, historically, her Shahada actually took place on the 10th of Rabi Thani, the year 201 after Hijra, and she was at the age of 28 years of age when she passed away in the holy city of Qum, and that city has become a very precious place because of her presence and her brother's presence. As you know, Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al-Kadim had more than 30 children historically, and many of them died in, are buried in Qum. Our condolences to the human race on the loss of this great lady, and I will talk about her importance, but the foundation of this all conversation as we continue is that we as a human race need to look deeply into our souls and Allah says, Ya ladina amanu alaykum anfusakum, take care of yourself. And here the self has two propensities, the propensity to go towards Allah or the propensity to reject, meaning one can be submissive or rejecting. The reject when we reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are known as, we are in the state of kufr. Kufr in Arabic means covering the, the, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, kufr in the Quran is used negatively and positively. Kufr against taghut is a positive thing. Kufr against the ni'm of Allah is a negative thing. So there are two aspects to kufr. But the kufr we are talking about is the one that we reject to the mercy of Allah. Allah says, Iblis is a kafir, wa kana min al jinn, right? But he was also among the kafirin. Wa kana min al kafirin. He was among the rejecters. Now, the human nature is such that Allah has placed on this earth and given us the power to reject Him. And as we know, when we read Surah Al Falaq, which is, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Qul a'udhu bi Rabbil Falaq. من شر ما خلق من شر غاص إن إذا وقب you know ومن شر حاسد when you look at the hasad all of these are the components Allah is describing them that Allah says I seek say I seek refuge in the Lord of dawn قل عود رب الفلق من شر ما خلق the شر that Allah has created what is the شر Shari here is the, the potential to reject Allah. So when we say that the evil that Allah created, it doesn't mean Allah promotes evil, that He does evil, for everything Allah does is good, but He allows His creation, like you and me, to practice free will, and the environment of the ability to practice free will requires the potential for us to reject Him. And that Quran called Shari. Allah has created, min sharri ma khalaq, like a teacher who gives an examination, the intent of the teacher is to teach and to make the, the student progress and with the hope that the student will pass, but in the process, the teacher has to create the potential for failure and therefore the examination must have the potential to fail, otherwise you cannot really examine the student and therefore the need for a student to potentially or to give the student the potential to fail is part and parcel of the greater good. So Allah says, bin sharri ma khalaq, by the evil which He created. You see, 
Allah means that I have created a potential for you to reject me. And in this potential, our self has the desire, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِ إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءُ إِلَّا مَا رَحِيمَ رَبِّهِ That the self has this desire to become very base and not to elevate oneself. And therefore we find that we as a human race, when Allah says, indeed we made insan da'ifa, khulikal insan da'ifa, we made mankind weak. This is obvious in all of us. We all have weaknesses. We all have our limitations. What shaitan does is he capitalizes on our weaknesses. And this is where problems start. That once we do not take account of the gifts of Allah and consider the weaknesses as the half full glass that needs to be filled, meaning the lack thereof in the glass is a positive movement that I am lacking a full glass and therefore let me go fill it. That's potential versus seeing the glass as half empty. Shaitan makes us see the glass as half empty and therefore wants us to reject even the half full that already is in there. And in that process, we start to practice destruction, self-destruction. So the verse I started with in Surah An-Nisa, Allah says, أَمْ يَحْتُدُونَ النَّاسِ عَلَى مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلٍ Are you envious? Are you jealous of what Allah has given to some? أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلٍ فَضْلٍ meaning أَفْضَلٍ meaning it has stages, it's, it's more preferred. When you're given precedent, when you're given like for example, two people can be very rich, they possess the same amount of wealth. They have the same quantity of material acquisitions, but one is respected more than the other. Then you would say this one is afdal over the other one. This one is more honored, is given more preference. So it doesn't mean quantity. There are those who have more wealth, but they lack preference. There are those who have less wealth, but they have more preference. Here Allah is talking about afdal, fadl, meaning with preference. And Allah says, Am yahsudun an nas. Are you jealous of what Allah has given? Yahsudun. Here the root word is hasad. And hasad is one of the core components that we must attack. It's extremely important to understand this. If we look at the history of the human race, starting from Adam alayhi salam, with even another creation called Iblis, who's made of smokeless, intense fire, you'll find the principles and the character of Hasad is prevalent even in other creations. So Iblis possesses Hasad, jealousy. And you find that his downfall, while he worshipped Allah for thousands of years, but his simple act of Hasad removed him from the dominion of angels and from that status of favor where Allah lowered him. Rajim, Allah con condemned him, lowered him, simply because he practiced jealousy. He said, he's made of clay, I'm made of fire, I'm better. This hasad. Now there's a difference between when you covet, when you look at somebody else progressing. I want to describe this very briefly within the time that I have. For us to progress in society, we have to live by example. And therefore, we have a human nature where we compare ourselves based on others. And this is how we gauge success or failures on the basis of who's got the most, who's got the least, who's number one in the world today, who's number one in the world, you know, this month, whatever, whatever. We compare. Now, comparisons are not wrong. It is healthy. It is good to compare with each other. And Allah mentions in the Quran in numerous verses that compete with each other to start to promote good. That if somebody is doing more good than you, then compete with that one and do even more good than that person. Competition in doing goodness is recommended in Islam. So being comparative and seeing other people's progression is a good thing because it makes us aware of what is potentially possible. So when we see new innovations and people succeed in creating a new system which we never thought of, it's not a bad thing. So competition in a positive direction of seeing others by example 
and saying to myself, well, I see that one progressing, I see that country having implemented these laws that have brought about harmony in society, I think we should implement that too. That is very good, because that's being a role model. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا the Prophet for you is your best role model, meaning he's the most accelerated, the most advanced, the most progressive, the closest to Allah, therefore follow him. That comparison is good. Where the evil starts and shaitan plays with us is when he says, why has that person progressed? You have not. This is where intrinsic weakness and laziness appears. I see somebody on the hill who's doing very well, higher than me, we have two options. I said, oh, he's up there. Well, you know what? Let me strengthen myself and start climbing up there and come equal to that person, if not higher. Versus saying, oh, he's up there. Give me a gun, give me a sling, give me, you know, something to throw on that person so that person falls. Rather than saying, let me get out of my slumber and my low position and let me raise my standards, Human nature in satanic ways is to be destructive. Rather than appreciate the individual's progression and use that as a role model for our own progression, what we do is we backbite and find faults and try to destroy. This sentence of Hasad, the Prophet has stated, it is Al Hasad fi Jasad. Meaning it is intrinsically within the body like fire burning wood. You know, wood by nature is combustible. By nature, it gives energy. But in the process of its giving, it is destroying itself. And the Prophet said, jealousy is like fire burning wood. So Iblis, rather than honor Adam and say, oh Allah, when you said, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَ بَنِي Adam," that's I acknowledge your mercy. I acknowledge your phenomenal creation. I acknowledge one more creation among creation. I acknowledge the fact that you've made him Khalifatullah. I acknowledge the fact that we should help this creation to reach higher stages so that they go even to higher stages of the next world. Rather, he asked Allah, فَبِعِزَّتِكَ لَأَغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ Look at his level of jealousy. Jealousy is of that character where the individual does not have the same standards, but rather than work to raise themselves towards that standard, they now work very hard to destroy the standard of the one who's ahead of them. So Iblis is asking Allah, give me the authority to destroy this human being. Rather than say, give me the authority to be regretful, give me the authority to introspect on myself, give me the authority and the strength, give me the tawfiq to become more appreciative. No, let me be distraught. And human beings are constantly busy doing that. Versus being grateful. You know, look, uh, Sulaiman was a great prophet. And one of the best examples in the Quran, even in Surah Al Kahf, Allah talks about Sulaiman and Surah Al Naml. You find Sulaiman is a great prophet, reaches such high status that he was, he reached as a prophet with incredible amount of power and wealth. To such a degree that even the insects and the animals recognize his greatness. So here, afdal, you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna Allah stafa adama wa, wa, you know, wa nu wa ala, wa ibrahim wa ala ibrahim. Allah says, I chose them, I raised them. I gave them status. Not because Allah wants to insult me. Not because Allah gave somebody more than me to insult me. Rather, Allah gave more to others around me to encourage me to move in that direction. We're forgetting this part. When Allah gives wealth to our neighbors and to our friends, it's not to insult us. It is to encourage us that here's the potential. Allah says, Qul, man harrama. Who made haram the beauty of this world? Allah says this is exclusively for the believers in the hereafter. So that which is zinat Allah, the beauty, is not haram, but jealousy. When we commemorate Karbala, 
When people ask me, why did the Umayyads kill the grandson of the Prophet? Simple answer, jealousy. Why were the Meccans so anti-Holy Prophet? Jealousy. Why were the Bani Israel relentless in their instigations against the Muslims? Jealousy. Why did the Christians who attacked the Muslims at all times, including the Emperor Heraclius, who was constantly manufacturing ways and means to destroy the Muslims? Jealousy. Why are the evangelical Christians today so Islamophobic? Jealousy. Why are the Zionists against Muslims? Jealousy. Bottom line, they are very advanced. They have the most advanced weaponry. They have the most money in the world. But notice, Afdal, meaning that the superiority when it comes to status, by nature, when you speak the truth, when you're humble and you promote good versus evil, then your status will be higher even if you possess all the wealth and power in the world. So it, it is no surprise when I travel the world and I see people condemning Islam without even knowing Islam, condemning the Holy Prophet without even knowing his background. It's simply purely shooting from the hip because of jealousy. And this is the modus operandi of Iblis. Rather than understand Bani Adam and understand the nature of Bani Adam, and to understand Adam as a chosen representative of Allah, and to understand Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt as the core reason for the existence of this universe, rather they shoot from the hip and become destructive. But the Prophet said the minute somebody embarks in that direction, they are actually self-destructive, like fire burning wood. But the unfortunate reality is that those who are progressive and good now have to spend a lot of time, energy defending themselves from unnecessary attack. And Allah says, be careful of that. For no matter what you do, if you practice jealousy, it will destroy you. Very jealous of Imam Ali It is no secret. He used to say it. That one. Uh, you know, they say Abu Sufyan used to kick, he kicked the grave of Hamza. And he used to say, you see, this Hamza who fought with this messenger, who claims to be the messenger of God, he's, he's in the grave, his religion is in my hand. Because now he had cronies ruling, and he himself became Khalifa. He said, Muawiyah well, is his son, I have it in my hand. Jealous. Abu Sufyan died blind, hopeless. Just like I mentioned Omar ibn Aas, he had a thousand red camels, he died with zero camels. But as he's on his deathbed, Muawiyah took all the thousand camels from him. All thousand camels. Amr ibn As died penniless. He had no wealth. Allah says, look what jealousy does. It eats you alive. Now why am I mentioning this? Because it's corrosive in all art. When we commemorate the Shahada of Ahlul Bayt, or when we celebrate the birth of the Prophet, the Prophets in Ahlul Bayt, know deep down, there are agencies that cannot fathom the idea that we're still holding on to this great personality. Or when we read Quran and we quote Quranic verses, the jealous ones become inflamed. Allah mentions this in Surah Al Fat, right? Allah is describing the last verse of the 48th chapter. He said, the roots of the believers are deep. This is a similitude Quran draws. And says their branches are high. And it enrages. That the good doers, the more they progress for Allah, it en enrages the kuffar. Why is this person successful? Why is Rasulullah succeeding? How did he go to Medina and unite the Aus and Khazraj? How did he become so strong? Why is it in the Battle of Badr? There was three times the size of our army, and yet he defeated us. Jealousy. Unending. The modus of Iblis. And we all have it. We have it because we're weak. But rather than see the weakness that somebody else is progressing, and use it as the glass half full, and say, ah, my neighbor was succeeding in that. Let me get out of my slumber. Let me get out of my state of abject rejections and let me struggle to become like that person, if not better, by example. Satan says, that's not good. No, you will backbite. You will divide. You will disunite. 
You know, when a mosque like this is built, I look at it, I said, if it fathom in the United States, in the Western Hemisphere, one of the most magnificent structures, it's just a structure. It's the spirit, the people who come here that makes a place a place. But still, beautiful. When I go around the world and say to people, oh, that, that mosque in Orlando, I said, yeah, oh, subhanAllah, how beautiful. I said, it triggers, doesn't it? It triggers jealousy. How come they have? They have it and we don't. And I don't want them to have it. When you start a school, or you started a school, well, guess what? Two options. Destroy the school. I remember when we were building the school in Michigan, as we were building the structure, we had, you know, uh, some time that lapsed because we were running a school. We had a big challenge. And our challenge was that we could not move. We, we were already running a full academy before we bought this property, the one we have now. And we could not stop the school because once kids are in the system, you cannot tell them, go to a public school for a year or two before we, you know, while we build the school. It's a challenge. You can't do it. So we had to struggle to find a place and it, was, it slowed us down a little bit. So the building was half built. Now rather than the community, and there are two groups, there's the community who's gung-ho, supporting, then there's that community ready to put the arrows and the bullets to shoot you. Ah, see, building's not done, good. See, told you, can't make it, destroy it. And you're watching them. You say, Look at us, we're agents of Iblis. Rather than come and say, it has slowed down. Is there anything we can do? Because this is central to the community, just like a mosque. It's central to the community. A school is central to the community. Do you jump in and say, let me help you? Rather, you hear two sides. One supporting the other one, ever thrashing you. It went all the way to the city council. And the city council says, you know, the owner of that school, it seems like he's run away to Australia and left the building. And I'm listening to this presentation in the city council on video and I'm smiling I said, wow but I love it because to me that negative attack is more positive than anything so the more negative an attack to me it means I've woken you up it means I must be doing something for you to have spent time to think of what I am doing I like that just like if I consider you to be very much in my radar then you must be a very important person. For whatever you're doing, whether you're rich or poor, it is on my radar. So when I came back to, from Australia, I went to the city council, I met with the mayor. I said, that person that you were talking about in your city council is me. And he looked at me and said, oh. I said, and where did you guys get this news from that I ran away? When you're traveling, construction is taking place, kids are in school. Where did you come up with this idea? Deep down, I'm thinking, look how ever ready the world is to destroy us. Yet, the minute we don't have it, we complain to God. Why did you not give it to us? Bani Israel were classic like that. They kept complaining to Allah. Oh, you are not giving us, you're not giving us. Allah says, I freed you from Quran. I sent a prophet from among you and I drew him from you. And I destroyed the richest man on earth with a simple stick. And I split the sea. And I moved you across and saved you and I drowned him. And yet you made a calf to worship as a golden calf. Just that my prophet went up for 49. And that you kept complaining that your clothes are getting dirty. So I made it not dirty. You were complaining about food. I sent you food. Salwa and manna. That I sent you birds and I sent you bread. And I sent you so much. So much. How ungrateful you are. Human nature. Our insecurity. If we do not take charge of ourselves, rather than progressing, we're constantly regressing, regressing, regressing. And one rule of thumb, the, what is the antithesis to jealousy? Hasad? Shukr. When you, Allah's name is Ash-Shakur, the one who is appreciative. Allah appreciates, Allah mentions in the Quran numerous times, that He's Shakur. He appreciates. When a human being lives a life of appreciation, jealousy is eradicated. And please do not underestimate the power of jealousy. If you go back in history and study Karbala, Imam Hussain is standing in front of the Bani Umayyah. 
the army of Kufa and saying, why are you killing me? Have I done anything wrong to you? They said, we were jealous of your father, Ali ibn Abi Talib. You know how much jealousy they had on Imam Ali That just in that one day, those who became caliphs mentioned, to mention, how jealous I am of this man. For he was the brother of the Prophet. He was so special, the Prophet took him as his brother two times in Mecca and in Medina. And then in Khaybar, we were all hoping that we would be the ones that Allah confers his grace upon us. But the Prophet said, no, the one who will go and break the fortress of Khaybar, Allah loves him so much. And I love him so much. They said, is it us? Is it us? And Imam Ali was sleeping, sick, and his eyes were swollen. The Prophet took his saliva. He put it on his eyes and said, watch who will go and break the fortress of Khaybar. That within a few, you know, within a very short time, Imam Ali Islam break the door and put the flag of the Muslims and defeat the Jews of Khaybar. Jealous. Go back in history. Today, when you look at ISIS, it's the irony. They, there are four Khalifas. Ali ibn Abi Talib is their fourth one. Yet the minute you mention Ali and you love Ali, they get enraged. Why? He's one of your Khalifa. Why do you get enraged? Because his fadail, his status is so high, even Iblis knows it so well. He said, nobody has the level of status next to the Messenger of Allah than Ali ibn Abi Talib. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. So when we see that, it translates into action. How do you amass an army where thousands, of hundreds of thousands of people are butchered, massacred, beheaded? You need energy. You, know, you have to wake up every morning and say, okay, what am I going to do today? Usually we wake up because we have to go make a living. We go buy to the supermarket because we're hungry. We fix our house because it's leaking. We buy nice houses because we want to be comfortable. Imagine having the energy daily to destroy good. And there are people like that. So I say this to us all. We should always be grateful. We've made a calling upon you, O man. That if you are grateful, we will give you more. If you are ungrateful, we will punish. And the action of an ungrateful person is destruction. How? They find fault. They will constantly say, by the way, that guy, don't trust him. So hold on. You're asking me not to be grateful. So what do you mean? This is no good. So please. I want to compare myself with those who are better than me. And I want to pray that I reach their stages, if not higher. In this dua, we recite, Rabbana khfir lana wa li ikhwanina alladheena sabakuna bil iman. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ hmm? رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا Listen to the sentence. Our Lord, protect us. رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا Protect us. Forgive us. وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ And those who died before us in Iman. سَبَقُونَ Who came before us. رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا استغفار is sign of shukr. Forgiveness is a sign of shukr. It's moving away from jealousy. It's moving away from hasad. And when people see something good done, they can't stand it. So you counter that. Wala tajal, my lord, don't put rancor, hatred. La tajal, ulubina. Ghillan. Let me not feel bad about that person. That person doesn't like me. That person hates me actually. Alhamdulillah, no problem. I forgive them. But they don't like you. They speak bad about you. No problem. May Allah forgive them. For well, I certainly forgive them. Really? You're not angry? You're not going to stand up? You're not going to counter this? You're not going to go and pick up the phone and destroy his life? No. Why not? Well, because Wallah khairul raziqeen. It is Allah who gives rizq to him and to me, to them and to us. Why should I indulge in self-destruction? No. Let Allah increase it for that person. Sulaiman, a great prophet, riding a horse with his army, a pomp and glory, and the insects are saying, move, for Sulaiman may crush us. Sulaiman pulls the rain. He's a prophet with incredible amount of power. The power to move the wind. 
He could actually fly with the wind. Hmm? He had the power of wind. He pulls the rain. And Allah says, look at him. Watch. This is a man who is better than all of you put together. Is he pontificating? Is he looking down on people? Is he like Iblis? Or the opposite? He pulls the reins and he recites something to me. It strikes the core of my spine. Honestly, every time I read it, it is a lesson. Just that one word. It's a lesson, a lesson, a lesson. Constant. Allah says, if I raise you even on a pulpit and you become the most famous speaker in the world, you are nothing. If you have 10,000 projects, worth a billion dollars, a trillion dollars, you are nothing. But be a role model. Let the rest of the world be triggered by thinking to want it. For if you start school and others want to start a school, encourage them. The more there are, the better. Don't feel threatened by doing Allah's work. You build a mosque, others want to start something, don't feel threatened by it. The more, the merrier, as long as there's unity. For Allah says it's fine if you can cater to different communities, no problem. But la tell me zuan fusako. Don't find faults in each other. No. Suleiman says, Rabbi, awzi'ni an ashkura. Listen to the word. Awzi'ni means I don't have enough gratitude. I am not grateful enough. He is. He is the most grateful human being on earth with two legs. Yet he's saying to Allah, Awzi'ni, my Lord, invoke in me gratitude. An ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayn. Listen to the sentence. He's even including his parents in it. Suleiman, a great king, riding a horse with an army with the most pompous glory on earth. And we know in Islam, no man on earth, you take the Bill Gates, the Warren Buffetts, the Bezos, you take all the richest people in the world, combine them all together, their wealth does not equal the wealth of Suleiman. Yet he's saying, Awzi'ni an ashkura, invoke in me gratitude. Ni'mataka allati, the blessings you have given me. An'amta alay wa ala walidayn, what you gave me and my parents. Wow! You cannot complete a human being. If someone wants to say, give me the protocol of a perfect man on earth. I'll say Suleiman. How? Put him in all the economic situations, political situations, power situations, the, the nature of corruption in human mind, human, human character. This man is impervious to all of the above. For he is completely upright. For he's saying, invoke in me gratitude for all the mercy you gave me, his shakur. He's doing shukr, shakur. And then he's even including his parents. Listen to this. He takes his dua to even higher stages where he says, And when I die, put me among the good ones. And put me among the people who do good. Wow. If we as a society had this character, we would not have problems in society. We would be so progressive. We would not be talking about earthly matter. We would not be talking about fancy cars. We'd be talking quantum level of how to reach the high station paradise with the blink of our eye. That would be our conversation. But alas, it's not the case. But I say it upon myself and upon us all. Ask Allah to increase shukr and to stick with it. For jealousy is deadly. When Allah in Surah Yusuf says, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ لِمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ We give you the best news. What is it you start with? That Yusuf alayhi salam has a beautiful future. يَا أَبَتِي إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشَرَ كَوْكَبًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ رَأَيْتُهُمْ لِي سَاجِدِينَ Eleven planets, sun and the moon bowing to me. Wow, a planet is bowing to you? For us, if one column bows to me, I'm happy. A planet bowing to me? Yusuf says, yeah. What does his father say? يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تَقْصُصْرُ إِيَّا إِخْوَتِكَ 
Don't say this to your brother. Look at the father. Rather than the brothers appreciating that this is my brother who's a prophet. We're so honored to be the brother of a prophet. We're so honored to be the brother of a beautiful prophet, a handsome prophet, a God conscious prophet. We are honored to be the sons of a prophet. Allah says, Look how corrosive jealousy is. It even feeds into the house of the prophet. And it's not one thing to say, and by the way, the same surah, you find Yusuf's brother, they go to Prophet Yusuf and say, Why do you love Yusuf and his brother so much? What's wrong with us? We do this all the time. Why don't you give me credit? What's wrong? Allah says, why don't you look at me? Credit is not from your father. Credit is not from your money. It is not from the people. Credit is from me. To izzu man tasha wa tudillu man tasha. Izzat and dalalat is from Allah, not from people. So don't care what people say. No, I'm jealous. Why did you not give me the honor? When I came up, you did not honor me. You did not mention my name. You did not recognize my, rec my contributions. Allah says, look at this creature. Why don't you ask me if I recognize you? And what did they do? Can you imagine the audacity to take your brother and throw him in a well with the hope he dies? I can't go deep into that. Ask any child today, take your little brother. You got the little brother? Throw him in the well. They'll say, are you crazy? I said, that's what they did. The power of jealousy. But what did Yusuf say? When his brothers came many years later, bowing, and bowing to him because he's the governor of Egypt, and they are coming to beg him for wheat, for food. Think about how Allah says what jealousy does. When you're jealous, you burn yourself like fire, burns wood, but then you end up submitting yourself to the very one you're jealous, and you stand in front of the very one you wanted dead, and he's standing on a throne looking at you with incredible honor. And Allah says, what's the outcome, you foolish person? You wanted to kill your brother. I made him so great, you have to bow now even for a sack of grain. But the beauty of this message is not that. The beauty of this message, and I conclude with this, is that the fact that Yusuf salam looks at them and says, I forgive you all. Not one sentence of hatred, rancor, agenda, vendetta, none of the above. Subhanallah. My God, what a lesson for me to be shakur in this world. And Allah says, when somebody strikes you, hug them and love them and defeat them by encouraging them to become better rather than striking at you. Grab them, be a good role model for them and teach them by example. In conclusion to this, you find Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al kadhim witnessed five khalifas. One of them was Mansur Dawaniqi. As you know, Harun al-Rashid was the last one. And they were all vicious and wicked. And I go back in history and I'm thinking, why? Musa ibn Ja'far al kadhim a man filled with wisdom. al kadhim You know what al kadhim means? One who swallowed his anger. Well, qadimin al ghayb Well, afin an nas They swallow their anger and they forgive mankind. Wallah, yuhibbul muhsineen. God loves the good doers. Why is this great personality in Baghdad, in Basra, constantly being in prison? Imam Musa ibn Jafar al-Qadim was in prison. In Basra, he was imprisoned in Baghdad constantly because every prison he went, he made the prison warden believer. Or to the extent, made them kind and made them submit to Allah. Even a prostitute enters the prison of Imam Musa ibn Jafar al kadhim They said, go, go there and try to entice this man. He's, he's without a woman for a while. The woman comes back a believer. She does shahada. This is the way of our Ahlul Bayt. So should they not be jealous? Should Iblis not be burning with it? Should Iblis not be angry when we come here and we pray? Should Iblis not get angry when we commemorate Karbala? Should Iblis not get angry when we mention Ahlul Bayt's names? Of course. But Allah says, لِيَغِيدَ بِهِمُ الْكُفَّارِ You will annoy them. But don't quit. Rise and be united and be better than them. And when you build something, build the best one. And the world should be in awe in looking at it. Not because we want to flaunt our wealth, but we want to tell the world that we are first class citizens because we are the followers of Ahlul Bayt. I've gone five minutes over my time. Fatima al Masuma was her title. She was born in the early stages of Imam Mustafa Najaf al Kadim's incarceration. And history shows that she hardly saw him. 
the caliphs would pull Imam Musa ibn Jafar, as you know, she is the sister of Imam Rada alayhi salam, and she hardly got chance to see him. And she suffered a lot. While her father is in prison, what daughter would, would, would allow such atrocities committed to her father? But this is a lesson for us, that while those jealous ones want to destroy, Ahlul Bayt, Ahlul Bayt are building foundations and building trees and flowering civilizations, we benefit. We follow that principle. But we also feel the pain of that. And they say when Imam Rida alayhi salam, after you know, she was the age of 10, Imam Musa ibn Jafar al-Kazim became Shaheed, Harun al-Rashid poisoned him. And you find that uh, Imam Rida was pulled to Maru, as you know, to Maru, which is now Khurasan. And she decides to go visit her brother. She was given this title Masuma because she was pure. She was like an infallible. She didn't cheat, she didn't lie, she was pure. And her status is so great, they say, historians say that before her birth, Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi was a famous hadith, he said, they will come, my granddaughter. Her name shall be Fatima al-Masuma. And she will be buried in a sacred place. And if you want to give Shafa'a, then go visit her. That's Imam Jafar Sadiq's sentence. Qum, Masuma Qum, it's known as the city of Qum. She travels towards Imam Rada, and on her way, she becomes very sick. She reaches this city called Sawa. She becomes extremely sick because the trip was arduous, very tough. She suffered, suffering. At the age of 27, 28, she becomes extremely sick. And there was a very pious man living in Qom, whose name was um, Ibn Khazraj, Musa Ibn Khazraj, who was a very pious man, a wealthy man. And they honored the family of Ahlul Bayt so much. He heard that Fatima was in Sawa ill. He takes a caravan and picks her up and convinces her to come to Qom. And she travels in her illness. And he lays the foundation for her, gives her his house, the, the property, and says, this is for you. And within that short time, Lady Masuma passes away. She becomes Shahida, 28 years of age. Because Shahada for her is grief. Grief. Tremendous, because she heard that her brother, Imam Rada was already killed by Imam Moon. She felt very much in pain, just like Fatima alayhi salam when she heard how the messenger left this world and the zulam that was done, that pain took her from this world at an early age. And this man gave that property to where we have the haram today. That entire property was bequeathed to the life of, to, to the barakah of Fatima Ma'asuma, the sister of Imam Rada alayhi salam. May Allah reward this human being for giving such honor to Ahlul Bayt. And may Allah reward us all for entering those vicinities of home and to feel the connection. As you know, many children of Ahlul Bayt, many children from Imam Musa Najafa are also buried in that same place. And may Allah give us the shifa, inshallah, to do ziyara and to visit them and for us to stand upright that in the name of these great personalities, we raise the flag of Ahlul Bayt. Allah la'anakullah al-Qawm al-Zalimeen. Wa sayya'lamu alladheena zalamu. أيام الخلبين ينقلبون صلوات الله محمد وآل محمد